Without knowing it, we subject ourselves to routine every day whether we like it or not. Every time we go to brush our teeth, drive our car, or use our computers, a small part of our brain sets in action a series of activities that we perform, often without even realizing. We call these things habits. We've done these things so many times that now they're second nature. What's interesting to consider is what would happen if we had to relearn any of these things. I can only imagine it would probably be like watching someone trying to use chopsticks for the first time, and is likely to be very messy and cause everything to take four times as long. So why is this relevant to us right now? Because of lockdown, most people's work situations have been flipped upside down. If you've been lucky, instead of a typical morning routine and office commute, you're now finding yourself working from home, often at a makeshift desk with little amenity. And like any big change, this is accompanied by a long period of adjustment, trial and error. This drastic change to working arrangements is now forcing companies to streamline remote working for their workforce as much as possible. And something that was once viewed as an occasional perk of the job has been drastically implemented across entire organizations almost overnight. As we have no idea how long this may last, it could potentially change the perception of working from home forever. The problem that most people are having with working from home right now is staying productive throughout the day. Clearly what's happening is unprecedented in the modern era, and as human beings we will inevitably adapt back to peak productivity and change according to our new environment. However, if you're ambitious and interested in bettering yourself or your career, it's probably best to skip this lull in productivity and do this as soon as possible. One of the best things about working in an office is that it forces you to show up. You have to get ready, make yourself presentable and leave the house. This usually happens at a set time every single day and you don't have a choice. Whether we like it or not, this brings us into some form of morning routine, often involving showering, eating and traveling. But when working from home, we actually have the luxury of not doing any of these things. We can skip showering because who's gonna see you anyway? We can eat at our desks at whatever time we feel like, and we're no longer forced to leave the house for that long work commute. What I found to be interesting is how this affects us mentally when we stop doing all of these things before we start our day. Showering, eating, and getting fresh air is often invigorating, and I've found that on days when I'm working from home, when I don't implement these things first thing in the morning, I'm often left feeling like I'm playing catch up with my day, causing me to feel stressed, anxious, and unmotivated, rather than organized, confident, and efficient. So while working from home, maintaining a good morning routine is a great way to combat this potential blow to our productivity throughout the day. In his book, The Power of Habit, Charles Duhigg breaks down a habit into three separate areas, cue, routine, and reward, which he calls the habit loop. Many of us understand habits to be a simple routine that we repeat again and again, but what many of us don't realize is that there's often a cue within our brains that triggers the habit that we've built up. For instance, when you make a cup of coffee, you don't think about every single step of the process. It's something you've done again and again. So now when you do it, a part of your brain causes you to go on autopilot. That's the habit. However, the cue might be as simple as picking up or seeing the kettle. From there, the rest of your brain does the work for you, causing you to fill it up, flick the switch, pull out the V60 filter and beans, and initiate that pouring process. That's the routine. Then there's the reward, where you can sit down, enjoy the efforts of your labor, and your brain subconsciously tells you, that was worthwhile, and it's well worth doing exactly the same thing next time. Habits save our brain a bunch of time and effort, and often save us from having to think about the intricacies of how a task is done every single time. What we may not realize is that we've been previously forming habits in our day job for months, sometimes even years. So now, when something like an international pandemic interrupts our process and forces us to work from home, we struggle, as we no longer have those productive habits streamlining our process and laying a foundation for our day, often leaving us with decision fatigue before we've even sat down to start. This is when I realized that the series of small habits I was doing every morning before I started working from home was actually creating a massive cue in my mind for a productive workday, and put me into a state that I'm going to call work mode. 
As some of you may know, I'm an architect currently working in London, and back in 2017, I had the choice to start working remotely for one day a week. After a successful year, this then turned into two days a week, and now I work a four day week entirely from home. Over this three year period, I've gained a fair amount of experience of what works well for me, and what I've found is that by maintaining or tweaking some of the original cues I had for my days in the office, I can ensure that my brain enters into work mode as soon as I start my day, to help me stay productive and organized for longer periods. So right now, my morning routine looks a little something like this. When I first wake up, I'm usually a complete zombie. So the first thing I do without wasting any time or thought is take a shower. This usually does a good job of getting rid of any brain fog, and then I proceed to make Nisha and I some mandatory minimalist pour over coffee to finish off the job. I'll usually then sit down at my desk to read something grounding and start my day whilst enjoying my coffee for the next 15 minutes or so. By then, my brain has usually had all of its cobwebs removed and with my spirit lifted, I'm ready to begin my day. Typically during this period, Nisha has woken up and has thrown on a smoothie, which we both have for breakfast. I really like these as it's a great way to eat your vegetables without having to eat your vegetables. And it makes me feel like I've done something good for my body before the day's even started. At this point, I'm feeling fairly prepared, but there are a few details that I've found to also give me a huge boost. One thing I had the tendency to do when working from home is to throw on the most comfortable clothes I own. As why not? We're not seeing anyone, right? But I've heard that some people choose to get dressed up for the office like they usually would in order to look forward to changing clothes at the end of the day. I think clothes can feel incredibly empowering, which is why I imagine a lot of people like wearing suits every day. The thought of wearing a suit every day now makes me shudder a little bit, and I do feel quite lucky that my job doesn't require a strict work attire. So right now, getting dressed for work can be as simple as refusing the urge to put on a pair of sweats and a hoodie, as I typically just wear jeans, a jumper, and a casual shirt whilst in the office. Although this probably feels like a trivial decision, it somehow flicks the work mode switch in my brain, whereas sweatpants and hoodies tend to do exactly the opposite. You can always choose to stay in your pyjamas all day if you want, but I'm quite sure that it might not work out so well for you in the long run, and I can imagine that if you have another half, they probably feel the same way. The things we choose to wear every day are not the only things I've found to have a big impact on the way we behave. Along the same vein is considering the things that we see around us from day to day in our workspaces. We often associate items we see with activities. For instance, beds make us think of sleeping, sofas make us think of lounging, and fridges make us think of eating. Therefore, having a dedicated space for working that's entirely different from the one where you're not tells your brain, this is what happens when I'm working, and this is what happens when I'm not working. Unfortunately, many of us don't have the luxury of having a dedicated office in our homes for work. However, I've found doing a few things to my workspace in my little corner of our 300 square foot apartment helps my brain settle down into work mode rather than lingering in relaxation mode. The first thing I'll do is tidy my desk, as by the end of the day it has typically gotten a little messy, usually because I've been using it for things other than working, so removing anything non-work related helps focus my mind. This narrows down the things I have in front of me and makes me feel more intentional about the things I'm using to accomplish the day's goals. This usually means narrowing my workspace down to my keyboard, mouse and notebook, which allows me to then continue this process onto paper. I can honestly say the best thing that has kept me focused at work is creating a daily task list. This is something I've done for years because of the old adage, fail to prepare and prepare to fail. So before I start my work day, I'll break it down into bite-sized chunks and attack it in a particular order, often clearing out the little mundane tasks out of the way in order to create some momentum and transition into focusing on the bigger picture. This gives me a bird's eye view of everything I need to accomplish and helps me approximate the amount of time I'll need to do them. Something I've also started doing recently is writing these down before I go to bed, which has been game changing for me. For a long time, I've had the goal of waking up earlier so I can be the next Mark Wahlberg, but I've always struggled at getting it to happen. What I've found is that by writing down the next day's task before I go to bed gives me something to motivate me into getting out of bed and to start working, instead of lying there like a snoozing, unproductive mess. 
This also provides me with a cue to step back into the work mode routine as soon as I wake up and helps remove any decision making and associated decision ma making fatigue before I start my day. I can't emphasize enough how valuable this has been for me in helping me to wake up motivated and it has helped me consistently wake up earlier in order to be more productive and get more done. By waking up early, I found this gives me a competitive edge and more time to focus on my side projects, like taking care of my fitness and my YouTube channel. So that's my insight on morning routines and what I personally find most useful for being productive whilst working at home. You don't have to do it this particular way, but this is just what I found to work for me. Regardless of how you craft your habits and routines, I hope that you found some of the information in this video helpful or inspiring to help boost your productivity and remove some of the more negative aspects of working from home. Let me know in the comments section below if you tried any of the recommendations from this video, and if so, how you got on, or let me know if you'd like me to explore any of these topics in more detail. Mornings are an ideal time to focus on bettering yourself. And some of you who already watch my channel may know that I've recently been endeavoring to learn new skills and increase my overall productivity and effectiveness. Because of this, there's been no better company to partner with than Skillshare in sponsoring this video. For those of you who don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community that offers thousands of inspiring classes for people that are interested in topics ranging from photography and design to business and productivity. For this channel, I'm always trying to improve the quality of my videos every time I upload. So I recently started a course by Simon Sinek, author of New York Times bestseller, Start With Why. This is a course on how to share ideas that inspire action. One of the key takeaways I had from this course is, like myself, Simon identifies as an introvert but through years of doing talks and presentation, he has developed a series of strategies to improve his public speaking and performances in front of the camera. This is something I think is a valuable skill that can be applied to your life regardless of what you do for a living. To find out more, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description below will get a two month free trial of premium membership. This is completely free to try out and an annual subscription works out to be less than $10 a month. By signing up, you'll not only be actively supporting this channel, but we'll have the opportunity to learn something new with the spare time we have while social distancing here together.